let's dive right in. We're going to need an advanced furnace, a few frames, logic inputs and outputs, a logic processor, a logic memory, logic switches, a gas sensor, five consoles, four gas displays and one hash display, a few insulated pipes, a pressure regulator, a volume pump, two passive vents and one active vent, and a bit of spray paint. So, let's first start with uh, basing the furnace by frames, creating a one by one chamber. Now let's connect the output and input of the, the furnace. This input is going to be the fuel line, which I'm going to uh, this is going to be the fuel line, which I'm uh, going to pass through the front of the furnace, so you can access it easily. Let's place down the pressure regulator, as well as the, the volume pump down. Output uh, is going to go directly outside for me, which you can connect that one uh, to your central filtration unit or heat management unit. So this is going to be the active vent and passive vent that controls um, the air that's inside the chamber, which is going to be used to cool the uh, the furnace. And now we connect everything up uh, and make sure that the data connection port on the furnace is connected as well. So let's close everything up. Just before we close everything up finally, we just place a gas sensor, which we are also going to rename to uh, something we can easily find. Also don't forget to, uh, to turn on the, the furnace. place down uh, a few consoles and place down in the bottom row two gas displays and in the top row two gas displays as well as the hash display. The bottom row is going to be inside the room and the top row is going to be uh, what's going on inside the furnace. And also just wire them up. Now we're going to place down uh, the logic readers. We need about eight of them. As well as uh, about four logic writers. Now we place down the two uh, math units, which need to be math units and not uh, math unitaries. Here goes the RTG. Now we are just gonna wire up every single uh, port of the, uh, the logic units.
now gonna um, place some tiles. We need two of those, one button and a lever. So we're just gonna rename everything. So we're gonna rename this console first the pressure inside the chamber. This is gonna be the temperature inside the chamber. inside the furnace. This is the temperature. Power. And on the left is going to be the um, ingot that's going to be displayed once we've smelted everything inside the furnace. So that we know exactly what's uh, going to come out and if it's ready. So rename this dial to the output dial. I'm just going to control the volume from uh, output the furnace and contents. This is going to be the input dial. The lever can stay the same as, uh, as it is, as well as the button. And now, the logic readers uh, are all going to be renamed for each and every input we have. So it's going to be reading the dial, so the lever, the uh, uh, button, as well as the uh, furnace temperature, the furnace pressure, the um, gas sensors that's inside the room, uh, pressure and temperature as well. So that's about eight inputs uh, in total. the screwdriver and turn every single unit on.
call the data disk and we are now going to configure every console with the correct uh, input and uh, data type.
which we can set the dial um, dial's maximum value with the small little screws we needed. Um, here I did it uh, up to 100, but uh, you can leave it at 10, just so that um, yeah, basically uh, you can uh, scroll down faster. some shoots to, um, to the setup, so just really quickly add um, one uh, that goes directly into the input and one that's uh, gonna output everything uh, up front. Now let's just add um, a fuel canister so that we can start smelting. So this can be connected to your, cent to your central fuel tanks or anything. Um, and then uh, just make sure that the pressure regulator and uh, volume proof activated. Here you can see that the mix is about 70% H2 and 30% O2, uh, which is going to be the best, uh, the best fuel mix. Now I just uh, set the, the fuel, um, the, the volume pump on and the pressure regulator also. And the pressure regulator is set to about 250 kPa, just so that you don't put all your fuel at once and you can control the input a bit better. So now let's just uh, fill the, the furnace up with the input dial, which we set to about three. And we're gonna fill it up up to 400 kPa. As well as notice that uh, in the room there is a bit of atmosphere at first. So we have uh, ignited the furnace, which is at 1,300 degrees Celsius, and we're going to start and try to smelt some stellite. But as you see, the furnace is dropping in temperature really quickly, and we are really out of the bounds of um, the necessary temperature to smelt some stellite. So we're just going to let everything uh, equalize in temperature. And then we're gonna flush the furnace and then um, refill it and try again. So here uh, it's just a little sheet with um, all the temperatures and pressures you need for the different uh, advanced um, ores you need to uh, to do advanced ingots. So we need uh, between four and five megapascals and about 1,400 to 1,600 degrees Celsius to uh, smelt some stellite. So let's get our uh, unsmelted ores back. Flush the, the furnace with the output dial. exiting through the, uh, the output. Now. now you can see that the room is about 1000 degrees hot, so you need to be careful now because um, fuel ignites at uh, above 30 degrees Celsius. So when the fuel is not going to enter the, the furnace, it's going to auto-ignite. So we wait till it's empty. Now we have uh, started filling it back up, so you can see the, the pressure rising up. 
and also the temperature. So we're going to fill it up a bit more and then ignite it again, since everything doesn't combust on the first pass. Hit the activation once again. And now you can see we had a stable uh, 1800 degrees Celsius. We're going to put the ores back in. And now we wait till it uh, has all smelted. Meanwhile, you see we are still at 9 MPA, which is a bit too high for what we try to achieve. So we're just going to start opening the output valve, which is always the first thing to do before you start changing the temperature. We're going to try to reach about 5 megapascals, just a bit above, since we're going to um, lower the temperature uh, afterwards, which is going to also lower the pressure. So here we have 4.8 megapascals, and now we can activate this active vent and suck some cold air in. This is going to lower the temperature gradually until we have reached the point where we have met the requirements for stellite. So here you see the hash display is going to display that we have successfully smelted some stellite. So all that remains to do is pull the lever and here comes the stellite.